Hey everybody, it's Mike and welcome to Chip Damage. And tonight is a very special night because tonight we're talking Marvel, baby. Yes, we are going to be discussing Marvel versus Capcom 2, my favorite fighting game of all time and one of my favorite video games overall of all time. Why are we talking about this now? Well, in case you don't know, we are on the possible precipice of a very special event. There are rumbling, rumblings out there in the ether of the internet that... Uh, there are talks of a Marvel vs. Capcom 2 re-release. This was all, of course, kickstarted by my boy Maximilian Dude, the legendary Max, um, with his free MVC2 hashtag campaign, uh, which has just blown up. You can see it all over the place. It has apparently been brought to the attention of people at Marvel Digital Eclipse, the um, producers of the HD version of the game. I should say the developers of the HD version of the game. And, of course, Disney, who owns kind of all the power, all the cards here. And... Um, it just seems like there's some momentum behind this. I mean, Street Fighter V is about to release some uh, a co new costumes, and one of those happens to be a Ruby Hart costume. Ruby Hart, of course, being an exclusive character to Marvel vs. Capcom 2. So, yes, there, there, there is some hope there. And, you know, th this is fantastic. Like I said, this is one of my favorite games of all all time. I have a long history with this game, and tonight I just want to talk about my history with this game, why it's so special, if I think it can come back, and why I think it should come back. Before I go further, I want your thoughts on this too. I really mean this. If you have any history with this game, with the Marvel franchise, what you want uh, from this game, uh, future re-release, please comment below. I love reading this stuff. I'll respond back as quickly as I can. This is the reason I make videos like this, is to reach out to gamers like you and discuss our favorite shared games, our favorite shared memories. I want to know what you guys think of the Marvel vs. Capcom series, Marvel 2 in particular, and where do we stand on this possible re-release. Without further ado, let's dive into my history with this game and get this ball rolling. Um, so yeah, as of course you can see, I have a few copies of this this game the, uh, assembled here. Uh, let's start with the OG, the 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 first, the best, the legendary Marvel vs. Capcom 2. And yes, this is something I had when I was 11 years old back in 2000, and I've kept it ever since. This is always ready to go. Um, this is the version right here. I've always thought it was funny that I picked Psylocke and Guile uh, for the cover of this. I mean, at the time, Capcom kind of had funny ways of um, putting up, like not the the main characters in the front of games like think of Capcom vs SNK2 in the US where it's like Kim Kapwan and uh Kyo from Rival Schools on the cover so like they just kind of picked at random but yeah this this version right here is kind of the preferred version that they play in tournaments and this game I keep so near and dear to my heart it stuck with me through so many years so many hours logged in this um a couple years later uh, during the PS2 and Xbox era, they got ports as well. And though these aren't quite as beloved, they may be a little bit easier to get because if I haven't mentioned, these are all very expensive and hard to come by at this point, but it's so worth it because fortunately there's no digital release you can download at the moment. So if you want it, you gotta get it physically right here. Um, yeah, I love, you know, th these are all amazing consoles, PS2, Xbox, and Dreamcast. And uh, any way you can play Marvel 2, you should. Um, of course, the Dreamcast version is preferred, but if you have a PS2, because everyone has a PS2 line around somewhere, or an Xbox, an OG Xbox, you can grab these, and these are still great. Um, and what I have to my left right here is something uh, kind of special. This was um, uh, something released back in 2009. This was a special case released for the HD re-release of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Um, or, I'm sorry, Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in preparation of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Um However, the thing with this is it actually doesn't come with a uh, game. Uh, it just came with this code that you'd enter, and that's how you got it on your PS3. You just enter that code uh, in your PS3, and you get it. But, hey, I was a Marvel fan. It was MVC2. I wanted it, so I picked this up out of the store. I used that code, and it's just nice to kind of have this case, kind of proof that that game existed in some physical form. And what you see behind me is the Xbox 360 version of this game, the HD version. So, yes, I own five versions of this game and honestly it's not enough i want more versions of this game i collect games in this series um whenever you know versions of x-men children of the atom all the way up to marvel versus capcom 3 i make sure to get every physical version of it that i can that gets released in the united states and i'm not ashamed because this series does mean that much to me and why does it mean that much to me well let's go over the history my history with it real quick and i'd like to know if my history with this is comparable to yours but it's the year 2000 it's right around the time of my birthday and i'm asking for marvel versus capcom 1 on the dreamcast because i was one of the few kids that had a dreamcast and my parents couldn't find it at the time. It was a year or two after the game had launched, but they were able to find Marvel vs. Capcom 2 for me and gave that to me. And I'm like, huh, 
okay, it's not exactly what I asked for. I didn't even realize that two had come out on Dreamcast. Uh, you know, I think I'd seen it in an arcade or a flyer. But remember, this is 2000. The internet's early. I'm a kid. I don't really know what's going on with game releases. Uh, so I don't know what to expect. But I pop it in, and it's a little different. It has these wacky 3D backgrounds. It has, like, this, these, this jazzy music. And it has what initially uh, seemed like a similar size roster of weird characters. I'm like, oh, Cable from X-Men. I remember the episodes of the animated series that starred Cable and who's Ruby Hart? I'm like, okay, let's play through this a few times. Oh, it's three on three, up from two on two. Like, that's awesome. Uh, and then I played and I unlocked some points. I'm like, points? What are these for? Oh, there's a shop? Oh, you can unlock some characters. Let's unlock character. I bet there's like five characters you can unlock. And then there was just, I'll never forget those days playing through that game and realizing, oh, I can unlock another and another. Oh, there's another one to buy. And one more. Uh, when will this stop? Why is there another Wolverine? I kept buying. War Machine? Okay. Uh, Shuma Garath? Blackheart? Sabretooth? W what's going on? Uh, yeah. Eventually, you ended up with this. I ended up with this roster of 56 characters. And it, that, that was it. That was a wrap. It was the game I'd be playing for the rest of my life. Um, and, you know, as the Dreamcast wasn't very popular, that was uh, the game that people came to my house to play. You know, a lot of people were playing either, you know, Super Smash Bros. on Nintendo 64 with Mario 64, or Crash Bandicoot and Crash Team Racing on PS1, Spyro. But for the Dreamcast, they came over to my house to play MVC2, and I was always down because no, we just couldn't get enough of that game. We were kids. We lived far from any arcade, and it was just cheaper to play it at my house, and it would just be ours. And, you know, it introduced me to so many characters, but... Ever since I was a young kid, I was obviously always a gamer and a comic book fan. Uh, my mother, in fact, of all people, was a big comic book fan. She came to the United States when she was a young girl, and comics were a way that she learned to read and speak English. They were simple enough for her to learn, like old Lois Lane comics way back in the day. So I was introduced to comics very early, and of course, during the early 90s when I grew up, there was X-Men, the animated series, and Spider-Man, the animated series. So, of course... Uh, when I had a game that combined two things that I loved, Marvel Comics and Capcom characters, because in my day as a kid, uh, Street Fighter and Mega Man were huge. It, it was unreal. I, I realize now how rare that is to literally have an East versus West game. Like, that is what that game is down the middle. 56 characters, 28 from the East, 28 from the West, just going at it. Like, that. that's so rare. Um, Marvel and Disney were obviously at a very different time in both of their companies history i'm sorry marvel and capcom i should say <laughs> disney i gotta get them out of my mind marvel was uh you know in the late 90s kind of having a rough time financially they were licensing games to everybody that would eventually bite them a little bit later but like literally tons of marvel games made by tons of companies were being made just so marvel could get some money and capcom was having the time of their lives this was of course after the success of the resident evil franchise which had just blown up um you know mega man was going strong street fighter was actually in an odd spot because Street Fighter 3 was not financially successful, even though it did have a hard audience, but everyone loved Marvel vs. Capcom 1. This is the early days of, like, the amazing Street Fighter. Like, Capcom, even though maybe not at their best financially in the fighting game department, creatively, they were killing it. Uh, you know, of course, with Marvel vs. Capcom 1 and 2, X-Men Children of the Atom, which led to Marvel Superheroes, which led to X-Men vs. Street Fighter, which led to Marvel uh, Marvel. Superheroes versus Capcom, Marvel uh, Superheroes versus Street Fighter. I'm sorry, as well as the the uh, Street Fighter three games um, and the Rival School games and uh, Project Justice, uh, Tech Romancer. I'm trying to remember. There were just so many amazing Capcom games. They were really on fire when it came to style and mechanics and fun characters. So. And this was also at the time where the X-Men and Marvel were at the zenith of popularity in the 90s. So when, the, like, it was really just a dream come true for so many kids. But for me in particular, who just happened to love both these hobbies equally, it was unreal. Like, just the fact that I would always, as a kid, pick, like, the Marvel side in particular. I'm like, Hulk, Venom, Spider-Man. I'm still a Venom show. But, and then as I got older, I got more into Capcom games. It was just like, you know, oh, Akuma, Kami, Jill. And it was, it, it introduced me to new Marvel characters. I'm like, who's Shuma Gorath or Shuma Grath, are you saying? You take a look online in the rudimentary internet. You go through your local comics. store, like, oh, it's a Doctor Strange villain. Blackheart, who's that? You know, like, oh, Mephisto's son. Uh, and then, you know, you on the Capcom side, I'm like, who's... Jin Satome, and like at the time, even though I had a Genesis, I'm like, I never played Strider. It made me go and try Strider on the Genesis, which was 
one of my favorite Genesis games, like top five Genesis games. So it expanded my knowledge of both comics and video games. And to this day, I like am, I think at this point, every uh, character from on the Capcom side, like I have the game in which they originate from just because like if they made it in Marvel 2, I wanted their game. Um, that meant, led me to get Mega Man Legends, which I did... Uh, I fell in love with it. was a game that my best friend had played. And he's like, oh man, Tron Bond from Mega Man Legends in this. I'm like, what's Mega Man Legends? He's like, what's Mega Man Legends? You got to try this. And, you know, it led me to that franchise. Um, like Marvel 2, like the, it was such an immaculate time. And that roster, like I said, it was, of course, the mainstays. You had your Spider-Man. And of course, remember, for your younger kids, in the 90s and early 2000s, the Avengers were dorks. No one actually cared that much about Iron Man, Captain America. The Hulk was always there. The Hulk was always popular. He had his own cartoon. So did Iron Man. And, like, Captain America would appear in things. But it was really the age of X-Men and Spider-Man. So most of the roster, of course, was X-Men. All your favorites were there. It was just so cool to see Wolverine twice. To, to get, like, Boneclaw and Adamantium. Gambit, Cyclops, Psylocke. And some of the deeper cuts, like Morrow, like Mara, Like, what... I had to look into that one. I had to find the comics with Mero later on. Uh, it was just a, a, a roster of mainstays of, of course, the X-Men and the Avengers. Uh, you know, even though you wouldn't really think like, oh, it's Avengers, even though it was X-Men centric. Then you had like characters like Thanos and like th the roster had deep cuts and fan favorites. Like, you know, Silver Samurai to Wolverine, like literally just the Marvel side, those 20 characters could be their own game. And then on the Capcom side, the same thing. Very Street Fighter-centric. This was the 90s. Street Fighter was still Capcom's made breadwinner. But, of course, you had the up-and-comer uh, Jill Valentine from Resident Evil, which was only four years old by the time MVC2 had come out. Um, you know, you had the Darkstalkers sneaking in because you got to have Morgan there. But you had Morgan, Felicia, Anacris, and uh, BB Hood. And that made me check out Darkstalkers, which is one of my favorite fighting games of all time. You know, you had some exclusive characters. You you had Ruby Heart, and man, I heard like years later they wanted to do a Ruby Heart mobile game, and I don't know if it ever came out anywhere, but I, I know it didn't come out around here. Uh, you had Mingo the Cactus, who like there's rumors that he was supposed to be a dark stalker or something like that. I don't know. I thought he was funny. My my best friend is Spanish, so he always <laughs> was like, that's my character. He represents uh, my people, I will always play him, and he'd always like get me with that like maraca super, like where he like puts you in his head and. Oh, it always make me laugh. And then you had Sansan. He's not really an OG character. She's like the granddaughter of the Sansan from the titular Sansan game, like an 80s Capcom game. And yeah, it just it introduced me to so many great characters, both comics and games. And yet again, deep cuts and uh, very popular characters. Like you had your Ryu and Ken and Chun Li, but of course you had like your you know your Tron Bon and. Um, you know, your, your, your more hidden characters like Jin Satome and so, uh, Strider um, and, and uh, Hayato from Star, not Star Gladiator, yeah, Star Gladiator uh, and Plasma Sword. And yeah, there's something magical about it. Now, I've been raving about the characters, but let's talk about the stages. Marvel vs. Capcom 2 had such bad stages in a way that they became iconic and then good. Marvel vs. Capcom 1 had brilliant 2, 2D sprite-lit backgrounds um, representing both Marvel and Capcom universes. You have like Wily's Castle or the stage from Strider, the New York City skyline. They were fantastic. Marvel 2 was like testing out 3D. Of course, like there's the circus clown background or like the, the European... Uh, like city with the clock tower or the raft like they were like they just didn't fit there was just like random pieces of 3d art but because this game was played so so much they became iconic of their own the music was it hype no not really not at first like marvel one had hype music marvel two has smooth jazz everyone can hear it like i'm going to take you for a ride on this character select screen that was like so out of place but because it sticks out for being so weird it became iconic over the years those wacky stages that like the, that weird jazz just because of the love of this game like on paper stupid but through like sheer perseverance of how great this game is they have become uh, that that soundtrack those stages have become icons of the genre you hear one note of that jazz of those horns like da -da 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 -da, like you you just know if you've played this game and it is so great to see this game persevere throughout the years. No matter what comes out, everyone always talks about Marvel. Is it the deepest fighting game of all time? Well, not really. Not in a, like It's not the most 
balanced, of course. Um, but this game had this kitchen sink uh, effect, right? They threw everything in, including the kitchen sink from the prior Marvel versus Capcom games. And they didn't really care, the developers, how balanced it was. And because of that, the game could be really broken. But because of the amount of characters and options and assists, there kind of is a depth to it, right? It's only really a four-button fighter with two assist buttons. Um, but there are still combinations being found. Of course, like there's your Storm Magneto Sentinel, but like there's like weird low mid tier like combos that just work. Maybe not at the highest level of competition, but honestly, who cares? It's just fun to figure stuff out. There, you're still figuring things out. When you have 56 characters in a three on three game with multiple assists, the number of combinations is endless. And like I've seen videos of like new things found on occasion, even to this day, and that is so. Like, just something that exists in Marvel vs. Capcom 2. In almost every other fighting game, things are found out immediately. Now, I love what happened in 2011. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was announced. I was over the moon. I worked at a game store. I, ma I made sure that we had a big event for it, uh, a midnight launch. I hyped that game up. I got so many pre-orders on that. Like, I, I made sure that we had, like, a small tournament for it um, just because I knew how special that was in after an 11-year gap. Did Marvel vs. Capcom 3 live up to Marvel vs. Capcom 2? Well, yes and no. It was different. I love Marvel vs. Capcom 3. I think it had a great roster at the end of the day when it was finally Ultimate, when it had the 50-character Ultimate roster. Of course, it was smaller, and it was a little less X-Men-centric. And I think that, you know, maybe I'm a fanboy for the X-Men. I love all of Marvel, but I think that kind of hurt it a little bit. It was more Avengers-focused. But it was still ended up being a fantastic game. Um, yet again, on the Capcom side, it was a little bit less... Street Fighter focused, even though they added C Viper. I, just, I hate that they added C Viper and uh, Spencer from that terrible Bionic Commando game. But regardless, it still had, at the end of the day, at the end of a great roster, slightly smaller than two. But in the gameplay side, it was a four button fighter again, kind of. It was like light, medium, heavy launcher. So there was a little bit of sameness in that. Like in Marvel 2, every character's launcher, like you had to kind of find it. Um, and there are amazing combinations and quite a few great things about Marvel 3, like roster picks and mechanics. But it doesn't have, for lack of a better word, the jank of Marvel versus Capcom 2. That jank is the magic. The, uh, you know, like there's a term uh, for mechanics called car magic where the dirt that's underneath in a car's crib is the only thing holding everything together, keeping the engine together. If you clean it, it falls apart. You have to keep that dirt and grime in there. That's what Marvel 2 is. It is held together by bubblegum and paper clips, but because of that, there's an element of randomness and discovery that wasn't in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. However, that was still a wonderful game with a great cell shaded art style, some great throwbacks, some great character picks. Like, you know, uh, um, <laughs> my team was Morgan Magneto Doom, and, you know, it was just, it was, you know, you had Deadpool in there, they added Nemesis and Ghost Rider, they still kept Shumagorath. Um, I had heard that behind the scenes, though. Because of the two new companies' position, Marvel, of course, being acquired by Disney, uh, they were a different company to work with for Capcom as opposed to when Marvel vs. Capcom 2 was made. There was a lot of demands put on them, uh, like little things like on how uh, accurate Doctor Strange's hand move movements had to be. Um, very minuscule things, but Marvel had become a large corporation at this point. Of course, they were originally as well, but it was more of the Wild West back then. They were a little bit more desperate, a little bit more mm, needing of Marvel versus of Capcom's like you know license and like the work together. Like Marvel clearly didn't need to make that game anymore. They kind of did it. I don't know why they did it, but I'm glad they did. And then, of course, a few years later, out of nowhere, we got the announcement of Marvel versus Capcom Infinite. And well. I hate to be that guy. I don't like to be, I don't want to say I hate that game, but that game is a game that I didn't pick up at launch. I waited quite a while before I picked up that game. I played the demo. I watched that game's release uh, very closely, but it just wasn't what it should have been. Um, right from the launch of the first trailer of that game, I believe it was back in 2016, I was skeptical. I mean, first of all, it was back to two on two. Now, two on two games are great. Tatsunoko versus Capcom is one of my favorite games of all time. Marvel 1 is uh, a two on two game. However, in my head, I'm like, well, yeah, that's fine for those other games, but this is Marvel, baby. This is the tag team 2D fighter. Three on three, you, you essentially make the game smaller. Uh, feel less epic. Like that was it. It was the only three on three tag fighter. Like of course, King of Fighters is known for three on three, but it, most of the time that's not a tag game. Uh, the randomness of having six characters go at it, like that was a Marvel versus Capcom two and three staple. So I felt like it was a step back. The next thing, um, as the like, the, of course, 
we have to talk about the visuals. The game did not have that pop of Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Um, like when Amaterasu, one of my favorite characters, like was on screen, she looked wonderful. She looked like she was right out of Okami. Spider-Man, the reds were deep. There was like a gray filter over all of Infinite. It looked cheap. I heard later uh, through documentaries that it was in fact a cheap game, but it sure did look it. Just it didn't stick out. Everything kind of muddled together. Uh, but like it, sh like this is Marvel and Capcom. They shouldn't have made a game that looked like that. And then as the roster came out, it was pure Disney. It was pure Avengers. And I know there's tons of fun, uh, fans of the new, the newer Marvel, as it were, um, that is very Avengers focused. And I love those movies. I love those comic characters as well. But the fact that there were no X-Men, the second I heard that, I was out. Of course, that is to do with the movie rights of X-Men being with Fox at the time. But the X-Men were the core of the Marvel vs. Capcom roster on the Marvel side. Wolverine had been in every game. Of course, you had characters like Cable, Storm, Cyclops, Psylocke, Sentinel, be, um, just being staples of the prior games. Like, you needed them. They were, like, meta. Like, you know, they weren't all, like, in two or three. Uh, they weren't all in three, but, like, they brought some unique ones in three. Like, you know, Deadpool is technically part of the X-Men universe, or X-23. Like, you know, the fact that there were going to be no X-Men at all, I was out. I was really out. Um, how... The fact that I could see, like, in my opinion, they picked some terrible Marvel characters for this game. Like, Black Panther, Bucky, and, and Black Widow. All great characters in their own right. But, essentially, those are all just regular athletic people with, like, level, like, slightly enhanced superpowers. They're just, like, regular people who use, like, technology to fight. And I'm like, that's so boring. Where's, where, like, the wacky, like, you know, like, Gambit with his staff and exploding cards or, you know, um... Th uh, well, Thanos did end up being playable, but very different. But characters like Blackheart and, you know, like where the wacky Omega Red with the tentacles or Sabretooth calling in Verde every couple seconds, you know, like it was it was a very uh, Avengers focused side. And just like they, they were just mostly regular people. Don't get me wrong. There was one or two cool picks, at least on the Capcom side with like Jetta from Darkstalkers. But even on that, like they chose to bring back Spencer uh, from Bionic Commando, which no one played in, like, they cut Virgil, they cut Amaterasu, uh, they cut so many characters, like, yes, Mega Man X was a fantastic choice to throw in there, but at the expense of, uh, a ton of classic characters, like, you know, where's Jin, where's Hayato, where's most of the Street Fighter cast, um, you know, it was, it was truly odd, and it was a small roster at the end of the age, like, 30 at launch, I believe 36 at the end of it, or, and, and, like, it was oddly proportioned. The, like, the DLC was four Marvel characters and two Capcom characters, so it wasn't even. You had an odd number of characters, which they hadn't done in Marvel 2 or 3. They kept it even. And you just felt the corporate. Like, it was a quick cash grab. Like, Marvel gave them the license, and Capcom didn't have the money or whoever. Like, there was just... Marvel told them who to put in to promote their newest product, and Capcom didn't seem to care too much about it because of those restrictions. Maybe didn't have the money at the time. Who knows? But Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite is the biggest disappointment of the eighth generation of gaming for me. And it is the first fighting game where I said, mechanics aren't enough. And don't get me wrong, I go in on fighting games. Mechanics are the most important thing 99% of the time. But the thing is, Marvel Infinite, it doesn't play that bad. But the problem is, everything about the game doesn't make you want to play it. The fact that it's ugly, the fact that the roster is bad, the, the way, the, just the general cheapness of the game, I honestly didn't even care how like smooth it was to tag characters in and out. That's never happened to me before. Like other games have small, like when Blaze Blue were first released, it had 12 characters, but that game looked great and it was fun to mess around with. It was fun to play. Like, so I, I played the hell out of that game. So like, but this was Marvel. This is, this was supposed to be the crown jewel of fighting games. And it felt like a piece of coal. It, it felt like, almost like, and I didn't buy it for year, like years till after all the DLC was done, which I uh, didn't get much because the game just failed to sell. So of course we all thought Marvel is dead. And uh, because of the licensing issues, Disney buying Marvel, like I said, Marvel is a very different company. I have a very negative opinion of Disney's effect on Marvel, um, which I can go over in another video, but all the digital re-releases of uh, Marvel games were pulled uh, off digital storefronts, the Xbox 360, the PS3, which is really disastrous. Um, this game behind me, this beautiful HD version of Marvel vs. Capcom 2 can no longer be acquired. Everyone knows that. Marvel vs. Capcom Origins, which is a fantastic recreation of Marvel superheroes and Marvel vs. Capcom 1, was digital only. It is gone. I, I have it on the Xbox 360, um, but that's it. If I, you know, like there's no physical version. That game was on... 
uh, the digital store shelf for like a year only before it was pulled. All these wonderful titles. Marvel vs. Capcom 3 was pulled. Luckily, it was brought back later to in um, preparation for Infinite. But still, like those older titles are gone. Marvel 1 and 2. And that's a shame because these games are so beloved. Despite being pulled, the physical versions, the versions that are left over, have shown up at tournaments. People talk about it. People want it. And at this point, I think there's a chance. I really do. Um, Marvel, even though they're, the pull from Disney has changed them, they have been releasing small snippets. Yet again, there's, of course, the one-up arcade units that have the Marvel vs. Capcom earlier games. The Marvel uh, licensed Capcom games from yesteryear, uh, the, from the Punisher all the way up to Marvel 1, have been released. However, those are very expensive and restrictive because of their size. They're not really full, like, they're fully available for everybody. Um, what people really want is a digital re-release of Marvel 2. Really, the whole series. I'd love a whole collection downloadable from X-Men, uh, Children of the Atom, up till Marvel vs. Capcom 2. I'd pay $100 for that digital bundle. But if I had to pick just one of those games, it would have to be Marvel vs. Capcom 2. That game is so special. It would make so many people happy. Um, Marvel would get a lot of goodwill. So would Capcom. Capcom is really killing it now. However, their fighting game di uh, division is a little divisive. Street Fighter V turned around mostly until Luke. Like, that was kind of a shame. But, like, they haven't been pumping out great fighters like they used to. Great games like Resident Evil, Monster Hunter, Mega Man, all great, right? And Devil May Cry. Um, but the fighting game department is slowed down, way down. And uh, I think that would be a great boost for their image. And it would show that, yo, uh, some fans, even though it would be a lie, I still want to be lied to. It would say like, hey, Marvel isn't completely evil now that it's owned by Disney. Um, and, you know, I think it would give them good faith. I think it would sell, too. If you put this out anywhere between Marvel vs. Capcom 2, between 9 and 10, 9 to $20 on all the shops, and you gave it decent online. I don't even care if it has decent online, to be honest. If I could just have... It on my TV and have good couch co-op like versus playing it feels right it's a little closer to the Dreamcast version than prior versions I'd be happy but if you gave it good online that'd be an amazing boost for the community who doesn't have a lot of friends nearby to come and play but any re-release whatsoever if it was between nine and twenty dollars I think you would sell two million copies I mean Marvel uh, versus Capcom Infinite sold about one and a half million units 1.4 last time I checked that game is awful but it sold enough just on the merit of the title but if you brought back marvel 2 i think you're looking i think they'd look they'd make some money um so i think they have the opportunity and of course max has been maximilian dude who you don't know is the best fighting game youtuber out there really heartfelt guy who had the pleasure of quickly meeting once at e3 very nice guy very tall by the way i'm 6'2 but he's taller than me he's like 6'4 um he uh He's been at the forefront of this hashtag. I think people need to get on Twitter. I'm not much of a social media user myself, but I am using it for this. Get to any Marvel or Capcom employees' attention that you can. We want this game. We will give you money. Show that fry from Futurama. I mean, like, just take my money. People need to do this. Maybe there is a small, small chance, just because they are doing those arcade one-ups, but if this game came out, that's it. And quite honestly, I don't want a new Marvel versus Capcom at this point. Um, if it came out, yeah, I'd probably buy it, but if they came out with like a Marvel four, or if they count infinite as four and they may call it five, you know what it would be. It would be like 20 characters and, uh, they would slowly roll out DLC, uh, over the course of a couple of years and it would be all Avengers. It would just be like regular humans with athletic ability. It'd be like cap, uh, Bucky, Black Widow again, um, you know, Falcon, uh, and those are great characters. And of course, Iron Man would be there. There'd be Iron Man, like 50 different variant suits that are each $3.99, but it would be very Avengers, uh, centric. It'd be like Star-Lord. He uses guns. Uh, it'd be Gamora. Like she's a little bit stronger than a person and uses a sort like, there'd be none of the wacky characters. I mean, I know they own the X-Men license now The uh, Disney owns the movie rights, um, but like even <laughs> I have Disney plus, like they don't have all the X-Men movies. They don't have the R rated ones. They don't have, you know, the really out there ones, but you know, maybe like, I feel like even with uh, Marvel acquiring those rights, the new one wouldn't be great. And Capcom, well, I feel like Capcom would focus more on their newer games. Like I don't think you'd get Rival School. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they would. I mean, they put Akira from Street, uh, into Street Fighter V from Rival Schools, but uh, it, I don't think you can ever recapture the car magic, like that random everything in the kitchen sink magic of Marvel 2. So honestly, I would take a re-release over a new game. I don't say that often about many series, but I really do mean it here. Marvel vs. Capcom 2, in my opinion, is the most fun fighting game of all time. And I feel like new generations should have chances to play it because the games and comics that are based off are timeless. People will have that interest. People still know who Ryu, Ken, Chun-Li, Mega Man, and all those characters are. They still will always know who Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America are. And this is 
a rare thing from the past where the uh, East versus West came together and made something truly special that is almost impossible to replicate. So yes, please get on Twitter, put it out there. There may be only a 1% chance, but let's blow it up to a 2% chance. Because if it comes out, if it does, the wave of goodwill will be something that is rarely seen in the gaming community where everybody's like, good, please. And you know what? I know a lot of people always, it's got to have rollback netcode. It's got to, or it's bad. Like, I've seen that so much. I've seen so many people harp on great fighting games because it doesn't have rollback netcode. And of course, yes, that may hurt it in a competitive sense or a, a wide sales sense but honestly this is a case where if just the game comes out at all for the public at a reasonable price for a decent amount of time at least we can all snatch it up because i think everybody would download it even if they're not going to play it right away because they know that license will expire eventually um this is a chance for that to happen and therefore there to be peace amongst gamers and it it just be a, a show of goodwill that big companies don't do often and something that I think that would be ubiquitously loved by so many people. So yes, I do think it's going to happen. I want to spread the awareness of it. I wanted to spiel about my love for this game, why it's so great. And um, yeah, thank you for joining me. Like I said, if you have any comments on this, please comment below. I want to talk. I don't want to engage with people about this. Please go on social media and talk about this. This is, uh, this is a game that is very near and dear to my heart and will be for the rest of my life. I will never forget unlocking all those characters and always being shocked in those nights staying up until dawn playing this game just because it was fun. Even if I was by myself, I would just play this game through arcade and uh, I just miss it and I want more people to enjoy it. So thank you so much for joining me as I spiel about hashtag free MVC2. My name is Mike. This has been Chip Damage and please take care of yourself.